What is it that makes business leaders so engaged? What is it that makes people walk the streets and say, we cannot accept more dangerous, potentially catastrophic change? Well, it is because the science has now come to a point with three new insights. And I'll be sharing these three cutting edge, absolutely most important insights that we can have. And the first one, which in my mind is the number one issue, is that we know now what is the desired state for us on planet Earth. I call this the Garden of Eden, meaning that we can actually now scientifically, believe it or not, define our desired state of the planet, meaning what state does the planet has to be in, what state does the planet need to have in order to support us humans. And we can actually define this from science, and it comes, not surprisingly, from ice core data. Because, you know, scientists have been looking at how the planet has behaved over millions of years, based particularly through what we call paleoclimatic data, which is data from ice cores. You know, you dig into the ice, and you can follow layer by layer how it has been to live on Earth. And as you may be aware, if we go very long back, we have now knowledge over the past three million years that we passed roughly 200,000 year cycles where we have like 170,000 years of ice age. And then we go into what we call interglacial warm periods. And then we go into ice ages, interglacial periods, ice ages, and so on and so forth. And it has all to do with our position vis-a-vis -vis the sun and vis-a-vis -vis the large planets in our solar system. So this is the natural cycle of cold periods and warm periods. But now I'll show you the last cycle, which is the last 100,000 years, okay? So this is just a snapshot of how it has been to live on Earth. And what you see on the y-axis is temperature, which is a good uh, indicator how it was to live on Earth. And why have I chosen 100,000 years? Well, it's a, an extraordinarily important period because you and I, we've been modern humans on Earth during exactly this period. In fact, we have for 100,000 years had the same intellectual and physical ability to develop societies as we have today. So we've been modern homo sapiens during this period. Now the question is, how was it to live on Earth? And I think you can already sense it, that it was a jumpy ride indeed. This is a very, very deep ice age. You see it's a cold period, but you see the temperature varies tremendously. The planet just bumps up and down. It was a hard time for us to live. We were hunters and gatherers. We were just a few million people on Earth. And can you imagine, during some of these jumps, temperatures could vary with five to 10 degrees Celsius over only a period of a decade. These are tremendous variations that would be just shocking, catastrophic, weather events if we were to experience them today. In fact, the variation was so severe that you see a low point there at roughly 75,000 years ago, and at that low cold point, it was so cold that the fresh water on Earth was tied up in the polar regions, in the Arctic and Antarctica. Sea levels were like 70 meters lower than today, 70 meters lower than today, and it was such a rough time and we had such difficulty in finding food and water that we were down, believe it or not, the latest science shows, to roughly 15,000 fertile adults on Earth. 15,000. So we were virtually extinct. We were hiding in the Ethiopian highlands, the only little place where there was some food and fresh water left. That's why we come from Africa. And that's why, by the way, we can say clearly, we're all very close family. 15,000, you know, we're virtually just cousins, all of us. And that's where we left Africa the second time and we went to Europe and we went to South Asia, all the way to Papua New Guinea and colonized the planet. This is a proof that it was a very rough time to live in this period. But then we leave the last ice age, and in we go in this extraordinarily warm period, an interglacial, you've all learned in school to call the Holocene. And the Holocene is where we are now, and it is an equilibrium. It's a state of the planet. But look at that graph. It shows you that the temperature is virtually exactly stable. 
And it's so stable that, you know, we barely enter the Holocene, leaving the Ice Age, that we do the most important invention that we've ever, ever done as humans on this planet. And I can assure you, it's more important than the steam engine that started the Industrial Revolution in the United Kingdom in 1750, and it's more important than your mobile phones that you probably have in your pockets. What do we do? Anyone who has a suggestion? What's the most important invention of all on this world? We become farmers. We invent agriculture. We barely enter the Holocene, and what do we do? We start planting seeds and start growing seeds, and we start domesticating animals. And as you may be aware, that when we become farmers, it allows us to produce food for those who don't produce food, so other people can differentiate and specialize to become technically advanced in other sectors. And this starts our modern societies, which takes us to the Mesopotamian irrigation societies, to the fantastic Egyptian empires, to the Chinese, to the Maya, to the Greek, to the Romans, and off we go into what we call modern civilizations up until a point in the mid-1950s when we take off an acceleration which is extraordinary. So essentially, science can tell a very simple but dramatic message to humanity. And this is the key insight. The Holocene is the only state of the planet we know that can support the modern world as we know it. And that is the key message, is the key insight. We can live outside of the Holocene. We've done so before, but we cannot envisage a modern world with good life conditions for seven soon to become 10 billion people. So if we take an ethical responsibility for our own future, we need to stay in the Holocene. We need to have this stable state of the planet. And I can tell you that's a very dramatic message. It makes me nervous, but it's actually incredibly, incredibly reassuring as well, because we know the Holocene so well. We know the temperature, as you see. We can see it stays within a plus minus one degree Celsius safe corridor. But we also know so much about the beauty on the planet. In fact, I can summarize very simply that everything you love, everything that I love, everything that we depend on, settles into the Holocene. If you come from Stockholm and you walk out of this door here and you love the archipelago and you love the ocean, you might love the rainforest, you might love the wetlands, you might love the coral reefs, you might love the wonderful grasslands and the temperate forests, you might love animals and plants, everything settles in during the Holocene. So everything that builds our economy, everything that enables us to be in buildings like this, have electricity and have consumer goods and have cars and aircraft, settles in during the Holocene. Of course, the genetic diversity has been there for often 100 million years, but it's been so variable and so erratic that it's not until the Holocene that things are really falling into place. And what's the proof then that this is the right story? Well, I can tell you that the proof is actually very well established because you might think, well, but isn't it so that just one smart guy invented agriculture and it just happened by pure coincidence? Oh, no. You see, what happened is that we barely leave the Ice Age and we come into the Holocene and suddenly we become farmers in four or five different places on the planet at the same time. You know, you have farmers suddenly cultivating maize and rice and uh, teff and wheat in different continents at the same time. So it wasn't an individual having an Hevreka moment coming up this fantastic, fantastic invention. And because we didn't have, you know, we didn't have mobile phones or Facebook or Twitter, we couldn't care. Oh, I came up with this great idea, you know, try this, take a seed and put it in the ground. Oh no, what happened was that the rainy seasons become so predictable, that the growing seasons became so predictable that what we call spring and summer and autumn and winter came back every year predictably that we had the technology even when we were hunters and gatherers. But then suddenly, wow, the risks were so low, it was worth farming. So the technology we took on based essentially on the stability of the Holocene. So this is insight number one. The Holocene is our desired state.